Sai, congratulations on the new role. It was your first day with the lads on Monday. How did it go? Uh, it went really well. Uh, usually, first day of pre season, it can be, you, you know, yourself, be, could be a bit all over the place, but I thought for the start to the finish, in terms of Cami with his setup, I thought your setup as coaches were really good. Uh, and then we told the boys before training exactly what I expected, and I thought he delivered it in every department. So, um, Again, pre-season is about fitness, but there was wee glimpses of quality that I seen there that gives me real hope that we can do we can do really well this year. So you've spent the last few weeks assembling the squad of players. Are you happy with how it's looking? Definitely. Again, as I said, the quality that I seen last night, everything that I seen in these boys when I signed them, I seen it all last night in terms of their desire to work hard, in terms of their desire to get the ball, uh, and then like I said, the quality at the end. So I think if we could add maybe another two to to the squad that we've got, then I think we've got a right good chance of having a, a really good season. So how have you found that aspect of player recruitment, finding the right type of player to fit your style of play? Loved it, to be honest. As I've said to you before, I've been thinking about this job for, a, for about a year now. Uh, and within that year, I've been looking at guys, predominantly in League 1 and League 2, who I think could fit that, that, that system, that position that I want to play. Um, you then need to meet these guys and see if they've got that hunger that you want in a player. Um, and maybe bar one or two, every single one of them I've came, I've came up with it. Um, there is playing players that I've lost, but I think everything happens for a reason. Uh, but like I say, for the position that I want, for every player, I, I think I've done well in terms of what I want for that position and what we've got. But then we need still need, I'd say, maybe a centre-back and maybe one more attacking player. Uh, and I think if we can get the right types in the two positions, I think we'll have a right good squad. How big is standards for you when it comes to your approach to running the team? Where does it come from, sort of, from kit to training, timekeeping, attitude, fitness? Where does that come from? Uh, it's everything. So... Probably the first person that I had it with was Tommy Burns. Again, people would probably look at Tommy Burns and think that Tommy Burns was all about having a laugh and a joke. It couldn't have been mere opposite. Obviously, there was a time for a laugh and a joke, but he was so big on standards in terms of what you wore, in terms of how you were clean shaven, in terms of the timekeeping, in terms of how you trained. And then I maybe lost that a wee bit, maybe when Tommy died. That kind of went away from me. And then obviously, the canio came into my life and it was like a carbon copy of Tommy. And again, when you stick to these standards, you see how, how much an improvement it makes, and not only on your pitch, but in your life. So, since the Canio, I would say, but even again, when I, when I went for the Canio, I kind of lost it again, which says probably more about me as a person. But then when you do kind of hit rock bottom, when you're going down night shift in the Royal Mail, and uh, as I've said before, delivering kitchens, you think, right, I need to get these standards back. Um, and, and since I have got these standards back through myself, through nobody else's help, um, my life's changed. So that's what I'm trying to get across to these guys, that, Standards is everything in life, and if you can stick to them, then I, th I think you can be successful in life. So you've talked about a couple of managers there that you've played under. What can you expect to take from them into your kind of coaching and management style? Is there anything that you'll kind of replicate from those guys? Again, like you say, the standards. I think that's a must, that, uh, all the best ones that I've had. And I also need to give Jimmy, Jim McAnally a, a massive part of credit because, again, Tommy and, and Decanio had these standards, but Jim watching Jim over the last 18 months and seeing how he deals with adults and men when it comes to man management. Um, so I, hopefully I could take a wee bit of the A3 because I think the A3 have probably had the biggest effect on me. So I think if I could get the best bits of the A3, then, then I'd be on to a winner. So how have the past few weeks been since the announcement? Obviously, it's been a couple of weeks now. It's out there. People know about it. How have you actually dealt with it? How has it been? No, it's been great. I've really enjoyed it. Like It's been full on, but uh, I, I enjoy full on. Like I say, when my life was at a time where you're sitting in the house all day and you're going to a night shift, I'll be honest, it's the worst. I much prefer now I'm working 24 hours a day and something that I'm passionate, something that I love. Um, so yeah, it is gruelling, it is tough. There is ups and downs. Like I say, when a player does phone you and say I've been offered a wee bit more money at a team higher up, but it does. you do have that sinking feeling. Then you just think, right, I need to get on with it, I need to try and find somebody else. So that whole process starts again. But like I say, it's... I'm doing something that I love doing, so I feel really lucky and privileged to be where I am. And how's it been mentally? So obviously as a player, you can kind of take that step away. You leave training, you leave a game, you forget about it, you sit down, you have dinner, whatever. See, as a coach, as a manager, what's the difference there mentally? Yeah, no, it never stops. I, I've slept maybe f on an average three hours a night since I've took the job. Again, no through worry, it's just constant shape. What can I do with this player, that player? How can I make him better? You would love to switch off. You, you try your best to switch off, but it's just even small things like your wife speaking to you, your kids are speaking to you. You can hear what they're saying, but you're not really taking it in. <laughs> you're constantly thinking about the team and 
and your coaches and your is your physio all right? Is your kit man all right? Is the kit in time? Have we got, have we got pre-season friendly sorted? So hopefully once we kind of get into the games, that'll maybe die down a wee bit. But as of now, since the job started, it has been a, a constant thought in my head. And as you were sort of coming to the end of your footballing career, was there something that you always thought you would do going into management? Have you been preparing for that? No, nah, not really. Never, I never really thought management would be for me. Um, and then Dave McCracken left Peterhead, uh, didn't really have a coach. And I was kind of always, not moaning, but I always thought training could be a wee bit better. Um, and Jim says, well, right, well, why don't you go and do it? So took it on, took, took the challenge on. Uh, I'd coached the kids at Celtic for, for 18 months. That was a great grounding for us. I'd, I'd encourage anybody who wants to go and be a manager and a coach to go and coach kids first because that's proper coaching, stripping it right back to the basics. It stood me in great stead. I'm still telling first team players things I was telling 11 year old kids. Um, so once Jim gave me that that um, platform to go and take the team, kind of gave us a free run to go and do how you want to do it, um, I got that buzz straight away. You see kind of players developing, changing the mentality, and then you see it, differences on the pitch. Um, and then especially the last year, like I say, Jim's given me a big responsibility in the last year in terms of standing on the side of the pitch. I mean, he maybe going stand in the stand. Sorry, sit in the stand. You can you didn't, you didn't stand in the stand, sit in the stand. <laughs> um, and he, he said to us, kind of towards the end of the season, if you see any on the side of the pitch that you think maybe needs changed or you think we could do better, just, just go and do it. So I think Jim knew I was ready, which also gave us a massive, ma massive bit of confidence. And again, at Peterhead, you only trained one night a week. We were going playing against teams like Falkirk, no Cove because they battered us every time, but your Airdrie's and Montrose, and you're going head to head with these guys who train train five days a week, and you think, if I can do this one day a week, then I think I can, with my own team and my own ideas, my own personnel, I think I could go and make a, a, a give, give this a bash, sorry. So you kind of touched on that there, so you had some other options to choose from, including staying and coaching at Peterhead. But what excites you about this opportunity with Open Goal Broom Hill? Um, yeah, so Peterhead again, absolutely love my time there, love the people that are there. And the plan was always for me to take over Faye Jim at, at some stage. Um, but it didn't look like he was going to chuck it anytime soon. But even maybe him moving upstairs and me taking it, but just when the guys for Open Goal came and approached us about doing it, I, I know how ambitious they are. I know that they've got the kind of same standards that I've got and uh, they, want, uh, they want the club to go the same way I want it to go. And then also the fact that I had the free reign of, of the playing staff and how I wanted to play and the personnel that I wanted to bring in. So it was a massive, massive pull for me. Um, the fact I could pick my own backroom staff and people that I was going to work with as well. So kind of sat down with my missus, but after I met the guys felt my, my, my mind was made up that this is what I wanted to do. Brilliant. So you've obviously interviewed a number of managers with Open Goal. Have you been given any advice from them? Have you taken any advice from them? Do you know what, people have been brilliant, honestly. Um, Again, I think football players and managers maybe get a bad rep now and again, but since I've took the job, you know, Derek McInnes has been unbelievable, was constantly messaging, asking if I need any, any advice. James McPake's the same, Jim McAnally again. I think I've spoke to him more now than I did when I was when I was playing for him. So Yogi, John Hughes as well, I need to give a mention to Kevin Thompson, all these guys. Again, no trying to tell you what to do, which, is, which I love. You know, it's quite easy for these guys to say, maybe try and do this, try and do that, but it's... Oh, very much. Date your way. If you ever need any advice, I'm on the end of a phone call. So, um, no, very thankful for the guys that have that have that have reached out and, and offered advice. So today we're currently here at Broadwood Stadium. So this is where you'll be playing home games for this upcoming season. What do you make of the facility, the setup here? Love it. Always have my favourite away, my favourite away venue when I played at Peterhead. Always look forward to playing Clyde. Um, I think for how we played at Peterhead, it'll be very much how Broomhill are going to play just the size of the pitch for how we want to dominate the ball and then for how fit we're going to be and how we're going to hunt the ball down. Again, that massive pitch covering distances. Um, it's genuinely my favourite stadium to play at. So when we first got the job, I think Mary Hill Juniors we spoke about, but after I went up and seen Mary Hill for how I picture my team playing, it's almost impossible to play like that, on that in terms of the size of the pitch and then the surface of the pitch. So when I was asked kind of where would you, where would you fancy, Broadwood was my first choice. Um, so when I heard that there was a chance of getting it, it was absolutely over the moon. I think we've done everything we can to try and get the deal done. So again, need to thank the guys at Broadwood who've been unbelievable with us in terms of facilitating and um, the nights they're giving us for training and how they've pushed for us to get the pitch. So uh, I'm absolutely delighted to be here. So the Open Goal fan base, they've been with you since the beginning, way back in 2017, supporting you at events like the Fringe, SWG3, Euros Festival, and of course, those so, the two sold out hydro shows. 
How much would it mean to you to have this place packed out with fans that have been with you on that journey over the last five years? Again, that was another big pull of, the, of taking the job, was the thought of that we could maybe fill Broadwood, uh, maybe Friday night, Saturday games. But uh, the people that have kind of got us to get in the football stadium, if, if these people never came to the Fringe, never watched the podcast, never came to the Hydro, I don't think the football team would have happened. So the fact that we can now maybe give them something back, they can come and watch us and, and we'll be out there playing for them because we appreciate how much they've done for it. And I think it's been a big pull for the players as well. You know, when I go and meet players, I tell them about the following that we've got open goal and the following that I think that we could have at a stadium like Broadwood. You know, you see the boys light up when you tell them how many people you can, you think you could possibly get here. So they're going to be massive for us. Again, any team coming here, playing against the fans that we've got, knowing how vocal they are and how rowdy they are, um, I think it'll be, it's going to be a right hard place to come and play. So the fixtures are due to be released sort of the next couple of weeks. How much are you actually looking forward to now just getting started and getting ahead to the season? Uh, that's it. I mean, that's, what, uh, that's why you're in the game. It's to, to, to try and win three points on a Saturday. Uh, obviously, the coaching's great. The, uh, the pre-season friendlies are really good in terms of getting the boys together, getting our ideas across. But that pressure on a Saturday at three o'clock to try to win three points is, is why we're all doing the job. Um, so I can't wait for the fixtures to be announced. Whoever we get doesn't matter to me. Um, again, it'll be down to us to make sure that we're ready for that first fixture. Um, and on that, we'll be going out to win every game. Every game this year, we'll be going out to try and win it. Uh, we'll not be playing for draws or sitting in uh, front foot attack, try to win every game. So very much looking forward to it. What are the short term, long term aims look like for you and also the club? Again, you didn't, we didn't want to get too carried away because obviously I think we finished 15th last year. Um, so that tells us a lot of improvement that's needed, but I believe in terms of myself, the staff, the guys I've got behind the scenes at Broomhill, but most importantly the players. You know, I really believe in the players that we've brought in. Um, I think that if we could get these standards nailed in early doors in terms of our work rate and our mentality, um, I think we can go and have a right good season. Again, obviously we need to take it game by game, but I've told the boys that we're here to win, um, whatever that looks like. but. As I've said, every game we'll go in to try to win uh, and we'll see where that takes us at the end of the season. So you're actually usually the one sitting here asking the questions, but how will you find balance in being a manager but also continuing with the open goal content on a weekly basis? I think it'll be fine. Obviously, I've been doing it for years where you're doing the open goal and then you're going in, in training part-time. So I think most managers at part-time level have got jobs outside of football. Um, I'm lucky that mine doesn't take up as much time as theirs probably, so I still think I've got plenty of time in terms of my organisation, my preparation for, for training games, so there'll be no excuses in terms of oh, I've got to be doing this and that. I'll have I'll have more than enough time to get my team ready for a for a game on a Saturday. Brilliant. Cheers, sir. No worries.